Good morning, I'm Trinity Chavez and welcome to NYSE TV Live, the epicenter of the global financial markets right here at the New York Stock Exchange. It is Tuesday, September 12th, 2023, and we are perched up high above the trading floor at the New York Stock Exchange, arguably the most influential securities exchange in the United States. And we are ready to celebrate the partnership between Endeavor Group Holdings, ticker symbol EDR, and World Wrestling Entertainment, also known as the WWE, which is also its ticker symbol. Today, together, these powerhouse companies are forming TKO Group Holdings Incorporated, and today it will officially begin trading under the ticker symbol TKO. Today marks the start of the long-standing relationship with the NYSE community of over 2,400 listed companies. And just to give you a little recap, Endeavor is a spin-off company formed by the UFC and WWE merging with Ari Emanuel as CEO. Endeavor holds 51% stake in TKO Group Holdings, with WWE's shareholders having about 49% stake. And to honor the occasion, one medallion and FTB gavel was gifted to Ariel Manuel, who is the CEO, along with the listing certificate a little earlier this morning. Now, the merger will mark the first time that the WWE has not been majority controlled by the McMahon family, which was founded by the company and owned it for 70 years. Vince McMahon will serve as executive chairman of the new entity, with Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel becoming the new company's CEO and Mark Shapiro serving as president and chief operating officer. Now Emmanuel will take on any creative roles in the WWE or the UFC with Nick Khan becoming president of WWE post-merger and Dana White remaining in his role as president of the UFC. Now to give everyone a little more background, Endeavor is a global sports and entertainment company home to many of the world's most dynamic and engaging storytellers, brands, live events, and experiences. The company is comp the company is comprised of industry leaders including entertainment agency WME, sports, fashion, events and media company IMG and premier mixed martial arts organization UFC. The Endeavor Network specializes in talent representation, sports operations and advisory, event and experiences, management, media production, as well as distribution, experiential marketing and brand licensing and so much more, which includes the WWE and of course the UFC. And we will talk more about that in just a little bit, but first let's take a look at what the markets fared yesterday. Now, stocks rose Monday to start a big week of inflation data as investors brought up tech shares in the wake of recent weakness. The S&P 500 gained about 0.67%, while the Dow rose about 87 points. But we have so much to look out for. Investors are looking forward to key inflation data in the week ahead after a string of stronger-than-expected economic data points last week had renewed worries that the Fed could raise rates more than previously expected. When Wednesday and Thursday are also going to bring the latest CPI and PPI readings, which I'll be talking about more a little bit later in the show with Jay Woods. He's the chief global strategist for Freedom Capital. But for now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to be joined by my co-host and colleague, Pete Ash. Connecting the opportunity is just part of the hustle. Opportunity is using data to create a competitive advantage. It's raising capital to help companies change the world. It's making complicated financial concepts seem simple. Opportunity is making the dream of home ownership a reality. Writing new rules and redefining the game and driving the world forward to a greener energy future. Opportunity is setting a goal. And charting a course to get there. Sometimes the only thing standing between you and opportunity is someone who can make the connection. At ICE, we connect people to opportunity. 
as many of you probably already know, UFC is one of the world's premier mixed martial arts organizations with more than 700 million fans and 228 million social media followers. The organization produces more than 40 live events annually in some of the most prestigious arenas around the world while broadcasting to over 900 million TV households across more than 170 countries. And our own listed company, WWE, is integrated media organization and recognized leader in the global entertainment space. WWE's programming can be seen in more than a billion homes worldwide in 25 languages through world-class distribution partners. The award-winning WWE Network includes content that is available in more than 180 countries. And to talk more about the long-standing relationship between Endeavor and the WWE and now TKO is our head archivist, Pete Ash, here at the New York Stock Exchange. Good morning, Pete. Good. Good morning. It's always fun to be here. You know, we always talk about our opening and closing bell being the largest daily watch news event. I think our, our bell ringers today could uh, compete for the, you know, special pay-per-view version of that. <laughs> I mean, who knows? We might see a little bit of a smackdown or something like that as we make our way to the floor a little bit <laughs> later on. But, you know, first I want to talk about, you know, TKO Holdings. This is obviously a spinoff. How would you say that the NYSE has developed over the years to handle these sorts of complex transactions? Yeah, you know, not to lean too much into it, but it's sort of the, the ring behind us on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. For 231 years, we've been helping companies raise capital, bring buyers sells together. But over that time, we've really developed a very unique market model. Uh, after the open, I know you'll be talking to the DMM for the new TKO holding, but our floor behind us is designed to help not only buyers and sellers find each other, sort of the core role of the New York Stock Exchange, but help companies transact these very complex this, complex transactions. Yeah. You have WWE, a listed company for 22 years. You have Endeavor, a listed company for 2021, for both merging their, their entities, but also then spinning out TKO Holdings. It's the kind of transaction that we do best here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Now, I want to talk about the WWE for a second. They listed with us back in 2000. Tell me about what that process is like. I know we have some video of that event. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, uh, right outside the, on, the, on the street. Today's Experience Square, but in 2000, it was an open street. Uh -huh. But with WWE coming down, down, we closed the street off. <laughs> we actually built a ring. And we had many of the of the people. So obviously, the McMahon family was here and celebrating. But they were joined by many of the uh, wrestlers at the time. Some still wrestling today. Kurt Angle, Steve Austin, Mick Foley, yes. Triple H, and a very special guest appearance in the ring by the NYC president at the time, Dick Grosso. You saw him ringing the bell. But then he strapped up. You're see the, the viewers are watching footage of The Rock walking through the floor. Uh, with their signing on the floor there, that used to be for trading the shares, but a couple of them threw a couple signatures on there. And really, you know, both on in the building and outside, what we do best, I know earlier, we're seeing some of that footage of yeah. today, the big belts outside. Yes. No ring today, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, it would have been nice to see, you know, NYC President Lynn Martin possibly getting in the ring, but you know, today so we'll cool. we'll keep it a little more business, a little more uh, buttoned up. Yeah, uh, exactly. But really. No, I mean we're seeing, uh, you know, obviously pictures of some of my favorite fighters. I know that I, well, I just hit my mic a little bit, but my favorite fighters. I was telling you earlier how I grew up on the WWE. You know, Kurt Angle, Triple H. Triple H was out there this morning in front of the big belts, taking photos with their in-house photography team, along with Dana White. Um, but you know, I want to talk about more iconic events that have happened right here on the corner of Wall. In Broad Streets in Lower Manhattan. You've been here for quite some time. Walk me through this. Yeah, I mean, the the, the wonderful thing about the Cornwall and Broad, there's the historic events, right? The, the George Washington was sworn in there. The Congress met there for the first time. Uh, the sort of the godfather of the New York Stock Exchange, Alexander Hamilton, presented his report of the public credit, founded the bond market that became the New York Stock Exchange. But also, in my time here, I've seen things like uh, they, they, we've converted it to, uh, to open cooking. We've had uh, filled it with sand for beach volleyball. Mm -hmm. It's really a cool way to show the companies that list here on the New York Stock Exchange. And you know, the WWE, obviously UFC, they're just, they're just a small fraction, uh, you know, uh, at, when we talk about the sports and entertainment sector who have, you know, casually visit us here at the New York Stock Exchange. Tell me a little bit about that. What has like the UFC and WWE done to change the landscape of sports and entertainment and what's the role that the NYSC plays? Well, I mean, they've combined sports, entertainment and business into big business. And so whether it's a listing today or their past history with us, listening to New York Stock Exchange, getting the capital to continue to grow their business, you know, not only bring entertainment, but bring jobs across the world. It's an amazing testament to the type of companies that come here and list the New York Stock Exchange. And that is a great note to leave it on as we uh, get ready to ring that opening bell because the bell waits for no one. So let's listen to that and then we will be right back. I'll meet you on the floor.
All right, the U.S. equity markets are officially open. I am joined now with Jay Woods. He is the Chief Global Strategist for Freedom Capital. Good morning, Jay. Hey, good morning, Trinity. How are you? This has uh, been some group. What, what an electric bell. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought there was going to be some sort of, like, smackdown here on the floor. There's not a ring, but, I mean, we got an opening bell. We got an amazing team here. We got the colors green on today. It's a good morning. Yeah, it is. I'm glad there was no smackdown because they could have just jumped from that podium and nailed us both. So that's a good thing. <laughs> that would have been a sight. But you know what? I want to talk about the markets. We have the U.S. equity markets officially open. What do we got? What are the general market conditions right now? Yeah, right now it's a little choppy. We're down a little bit this morning. You know, it, it's kind of a slow season. We got through earnings season. Everyone's focused on one earning in particular, an Oracle, which missed and is trading a little lower. Um, I, I saw a crowd over there in, uh, in you know, post eight where it trades. So it's been, uh, you know, it's September. Uh, historically, we're down in September. It's been choppy, but uh, there's still a lot of good things to look forward to as we head in and close out this year. Yeah, tell me about that because, you know, we hit record low numbers, numbers in August. Now we're seeing record lows right now in September. What do you think is driving that? What should investors look out for? Yeah, these are typical seasonal headwinds. So we're, we're watching a few economic data points later this week that could move the markets. We're watching the Fed. They're in a quiet period right now. Their meeting is the 19th and the 20th. We'll see if they keep rates flat, which we believe will be the case and then give us a hint for that November meeting if they may raise again. Uh, so there are a few things we're watching, but overall we're kind of in a lull. We got through earnings period. Uh, we had a nice run. We're giving a little bit back. The S&P 500 corrects on average 5% three times a year. We've done it twice now, and now we're just kind of waiting to get our feet under us to go higher at the end of the year. Now, you know, as we're waiting for that Fed decision to come out, obviously investors are, you know, concerned about those inflation numbers. CPI, PPI is coming out. What would you say to investors? What can they take from this numbers to imply to their investing strategies? Well, first of all, to the investors, the long-term investors, don't even worry about these numbers on a daily basis. You'll go crazy if you do. Um, you know, but what we're watching down here is the CPI. The CPI is a number that has moved this market, uh, and we'll see some wild intraday swings, and it'll give us an indication of, you know, if the Fed rate policies have been doing their job. Uh, right now, energy is one of those sectors we're a little concerned with that could cause inflation to rise because gas prices have been going up, uh, but we'll see. Uh, those numbers come out tomorrow at 830 and we'll be watching closely and uh, speaking of right now we're seeing the uh, TKO team you know you just saw Dana White we saw Lynn Martin who is the president of the New York Stock Exchange they're heading over to the first trade bell which we're gonna see them ring in just a few moments to ring the opening bell is amazing but that first trade bell only happens one time so I may cut you off a time <laughs> at, at some point in time here as we tune into that but you know let's talk more about sectors you were just talking about you know specific sectors let's talk about the entertainment sector obviously TKO is a spin-off what sort of trends right now are are you seeing in the entertainment sector? Well, you know, the entertainment sector had been hot for a while. I mean, we, we people are getting out after COVID and, uh, you know, concerts, venues, events like this. Uh, people want to get out. They want to go. And, you know, the draw, the history of WWE and now with TKO, uh, you know, you're talking to a very biased crowd down here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. We're big fans. So we see nothing but great things in their future. And then historically how WWE has performed knowing that stock. Uh, Actually, I'm going to pause you right there because we're getting uh, images of the first trade bell. We just got pictures of the first trade bell. It is official. TKO, ticker symbol TKO, officially a part of the NYSE community of over 2,400 listed companies. It's obviously doing huge, uh, it's a huge milestone mm -hmm. for the entertainment space. I want, go ahead and finish your thought what we were talking about. Well, let's, let's talk about that huge milestone because they just rang that bell. And that's, that's the first day and the next day of your big relationship. And it's the relationship that started here at the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, you, you've now let the public decide how they're going to react react to, you know, all the great things that you're doing. And knowing the brand, knowing the love for it, I, I think there are great things to come. So to, to see that uh, bell ringing and to, to be a part of that was, was a fascinating part. But it's just day one of the next leg of your great journey. Just day one. I love that thought right there and that sentiment. So the WWE Endeavor and uh, UFC, obviously, they're global brands. They, yeah. they're global, they have a global reach. So, I mean, what would you say to investors as far as investment opportunities when it comes to the entertainment space, considering this is these are companies that specialize in that area yeah it, it is a global brand and I'm glad you recognize that because it's early innings I mean the the hype like that my teenagers now are into this so much like 
I'm just getting into it, the older generation is just getting into it, the younger generation is absorbing it, and it is a global brand, and it's just going to grow tremendously over time. So, uh, you know, like I said, day one, I know for the people that put in the hard work to get you to day one as a publicly traded company, it, it, it doesn't seem that way, but uh, to the public, you know, they're excited. You know, I want to talk about your own personal vantage point. Okay, so when it comes to the entertainment sector, obviously it's being uh, changed through this ever-evolving landscape of technology. How should investors navigate through these changing waters? Well, the technology makes things more interactive as well. Yeah. And it, it now uh, enables entertainment to be right there in your phone, in your lap, anywhere you go. And uh, we've seen that with WWE and their reach and how they've gone out and just how they share the stories with the public. We do it here, we're doing it right now. Um, so, you know, AI technology, that's gonna just make things better. Um, it's gonna create more jobs. People say it's gonna, you know, eat jobs, but the jobs that it eats, they're gonna create because people need to program these things, train them, and monitor them. So uh, I, I think the AI process is gonna affect every part of the industry, especially travel and leisure, entertainment, um, you know, but it, it's it's a tech story, so people tend to focus on that. Now you've talked about this a little bit, but I want you to really dive in here. Tell me about how international expansion and content distribution factor play into investment prospects. Yeah, well, you know, anytime you can get a global stage like the New York Stock Exchange to really highlight your brand, the world sees. And uh, this is just going to put more eyeballs on the story, and investors are going to say, wait a second, I can buy what I watch all the time, and to me, that is like Warren Buffett approach. Buy what you know, buy what you use, buy what you love, and what, what better story here? And then to, to answer the global part of the question, yeah, it, 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 just because we trade at the New York Stock Exchange doesn't mean it's localized to the American economy. This is a global brand, and it will do well. And you know what, I want to tell our viewers for, who may not know about the significance in listing here with the New York Stock Exchange is the fact that we have a designated market maker, specialized trader. I mean, as you know, you've been here, what, 20 years on the floor? Uh, a little more than that, 32, 31, I don't know. I don't count anymore. Uh, but yeah, I was a former designated market maker. And, uh, you know, to be that layer of defense for these companies. So when a company trades, they have one person, one designated market maker who's responsible for handling all the activity in that stock. And that market maker really has their eyeballs set on exactly who's buying, who's selling, the trends they're seeing in the stock, the technicals behind it. Um, and they can add a layer of defense because they're also putting their capital to work to buy in absence of buyers, to make sure things aren't as volatile as you want. You know, you want to dampen volatility, especially in times of turmoil. And then to give a report back to the people at the company to let them know what's going on. Uh, so we're that layer of defense here for them and making sure that, that ride, uh, for the stock at least, is going smooth and uh, we're accountable. A very important role. Thank you so much, Jay. I know you got a busy day ahead of you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. All right, we're going to toss it to a quick commercial break and then when we get back, I'm going to speak to the designated market maker for TKO. <laughs>
right, I am joined now with Picciacci. He is the head of DMM floor trading for Citadel Securities, and he is the designated market maker. Well, Citadel Securities is the designated market maker for TKO. We are right here next to the first trade bell, as you heard earlier. So, Pete, good morning. What a fantastic morning. Fantastic day for the New York Stock Exchange. Fantastic day for TKO and the Endeavor team. Just a really fabulous transaction to be a part of. And you know what? Speaking of being a part of this transaction, I was telling our viewers a little bit about the role of a DMM, but I'm sure that you'll do a much better job than that. So why don't you tell everyone what you do here? Sure. So the role of the DMM is actually to provide liquidity into the market to help the markets move more smoothly. The other part of the DMM is to service the listed client about what's potentially driving the price action in their stocks. It's not only a relationship from today, the first day of trading in TKO, it's a relationship through the entire life cycle of the listed company, and it is unique to the New York Stock Exchange having that relationship. And you know what, just a few minutes ago, we heard uh, the first trade bell obviously ring. This is significant because, you know, you ring the opening bell, but the first trade bell only has one time. Walk me through the process of getting here today. Yeah, so it, it's really, it's a phenomenal event that the New York Stock Exchange puts on for the listed companies. So today, TKO had the opportunity to ring the main bell, and then they have the opportunity to come to the trading post when we officially open the stock and ring the secondary bell, which they're allowed to share with all of their employees. You could see all walking around the floor, all of their executives get the opportunity to take photos and share in that process of price discovery, figuring out the appropriate price to open the symbol for official trading. Now that TKO KO is officially a part of the over 2,400 listed companies here at the New York Stock Exchange. How do you see it positioning itself as a company in the sports and entertainment landscape? Yeah, well, I think if you just look at what Endeavor did over the years and what WWE did, they're two fantastic brands. And I think when you merge the two brands of UFC and WWE, you have an opportunity for investors to look at a pure company, a pure play on what this entertainment industry is. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for people to have a chance if they decide to be to want to invest to have an opportunity to invest in a pure play that this is again investors will all make their own decisions of whether they want to invest but the idea that this company is now a standalone company merged with the WWE and UFC gives those investors the opportunity to have selection about what they want to own thank you so much Pete that was a lot of important information I'll let you go now thanks Trinity appreciate it congratulations all right, everyone, that just about wraps it up. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at NYSC. But until next time, tune in for the closing bell. We'll see you later. Together, we built something truly beautiful in the true iconic notion of what America is all about. This is our task, this is our mission. We have a clear focus and we have the ability to be agile and innovate. It takes years of dedication to get us to this milestone. It is all because of you. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It is the only thing that ever has. To be a woman leader, it's not so easy, but it's easy if the passion and the love is coming from your heart. The New York Stock Exchange is the symbol of what America is all about. The potential of capitalism, the potential of an American dream. The only way you can move a society forward is a true expression of freedom.